Hey guys, so here is a separate video for the panel because it was so long that I didn't wanna make it even longer of a video by putting it into the other one. So I bring you guys the 30th, oh, sorry, hold on, let me do this again. I bring to you the Hocus Pocus 30th anniversary reunion panel. I hope you guys enjoy. Family, please put your hands together and welcome your moderator. You know it. Give it up for Michelle. are so grateful to all of you. And House of Mouse Expo would not exist without you, so thank you so much for the bottom of our We are going to introduce the little girl that stole the show and Hocus Pocus awesome. 2, Taylor Page Henderson. <laughs> Next up, you know him as Mortal Bus Boy, Dinosaur. <laughs> Okay, next up is the 
sassiest cat in town, Jason Marsden. <laughs> Candle that you're missing. Vanessa Shaw. Yeah. Thank you. What's your favorite seasoning? Salt. 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 You are clever little witches. <laughs> Next up is the person who loves the candle. is Emily Dinks herself, Amanda Shepard. Wasn't she? Yes. I mean, young Winnie. 
All right, so, so I guess my question to you is, what is it like to step in the shoes of that character? Were you nervous? Did you feel you had something to live up to? Or just tell us about the experience of Hocus Pocus 2. Um, well, I definitely had a lot of weight on my shoulders being a young lady, and so I'm super nervous, like, all the time. Um, like, every time I stepped on set, I was like, okay, hey, I gotta bring it today, like, and... You brought it! <laughs> um, and called me recently because we worked on Ray Donovan together a show that we did for Showtime and she called me out and said you need to come to this it's the 30th anniversary she told me all about the con I said oh man that sounds like a lot of fun <laughs> had to show up and the interesting thing is she's one of the only people I've seen since we wrapped yeah. I haven't seen Amr or anybody else since we wrapped the movie so this has been really cool for me we're all a little bit older <laughs> a little bit crazier but uh, just as fun, it's just like as if it was the first day we all worked together. I mean, it's just, it's just a, like a family, and it's, it's a really great opportunity. And I'm thrilled to be here and be a part of this, because this movie is freaking awesome. Yeah! It's a great movie. Thanks for having me, Michelle. Hey, thank you for being here. Okay, so, um, so, Don. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful, Michelle. I know. <laughs> oh, okay, so we're going to try lightly on this question, are you ready? Yeah. Try. Yeah. There's children in the room. It may take me a couple of tries. I can't. I didn't say anything. Okay, so here's my question since we're talking about being inappropriate. Uh, supposed to play the bus driver. Okay? Oh. 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 <laughs> 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 I gotta be nice to him. Okay. So, uh, and I guess he thought the role was too small for him because he was going to be a big superstar because uh, he had just did a movie called Ford Fairlane. Boy, that's a real good movie. Um, <laughs> and uh, three 
three days before he was supposed to shoot that he quit the quit the uh, job. So my uh, the guy who's the set director, who happens to be the godfather of my child now, heard the director saying that uh, we need to get an actor to replace Dice. So he says, I know a guy that can do that. <laughs> so he uh, they called my agent. I went up to Kenny Ortega, who's the director. Yes. Of the trailer. <laughs> I think he's dead. Is he dead? No. Oh, he's not dead. Okay. Mike said he was dead. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, I'm trying to tell my story. I was speaking for all his Alzheimer's medication. Oh, wow. You see that? By the way, this is the first time I have ever met. Any of these people was last night. First time. So think about that. Yeah. Thirty years in the coke movie. All of these people, and you think, oh, they best friends. They hang out. They go to drink. All that. No, 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 no. Nobody has asked me for sushi. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I met him last night. And, oh, I'm going too long. Let me get back to Dutch. Okay. <laughs> Guys couldn't do the job. So anyway, I show up. I audition for the job. Blah 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 blah. Anyway, I get on the set. And um, so I do a couple of the lines, meet a couple of girls, you know, we, you know, I'm trying to have some fun. And um, so I started, just started, I said, if Dice was doing this role, I started channeling Dice. You remember when he had those x-rayed in? So I said, so I said, you know, let me do it with, a, with some uh, Dicey stuff in there. So, uh, so I just got this voice and I started thinking and then so I started right. So I do a lot of the lines that you guys like and that you quote, I made those up. I improved all those lines. Uh, the, uh, oh Lord, I think I need a chemical list. Like, Cause you guys are giving me a fever. <laughs> Party pooping when the best was getting off the bus. I was just be winging that stuff. I was trying to just do like a dicey thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, I think I'm done. Uh, you know, Michelle keeps giving me that that eye. You know, so I tell you what, she gets hostile when you get a piss call. Oh, man, man, I like that. I'm um, anyway, so, uh, you know, all I want to say is that meeting these guys, it's just been, it's like I'm in Italy, in Sicily, and I'm meeting old, like, cousins. We all get the same grandma. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I just, I really do. It was, it was good. It was funny. 
It was yeah. good. And then as as you uh, got older, did you realize exactly what a special project you were part of? Yes, I did. Yeah. Yes, yes, I did. Good. I'm yeah. glad that you're here. But it took a long time. Thank you. Did it? Yeah. Well, how old were you? you know? Seven. You were seven. Oh, seven. she was only seven. Yeah. 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 All right. I want to talk to my most favorite bullies on the whole. So these. Oh. Oh. I wasn't talking about yes, though. I was talking about you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mike, <help> you. <laughs> You're not a bully. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. You're not a bully. I love you. Hi, guys. So, um, with the two of you, kind of like what we touched on last year, um, you know, I, I, like I told you before, bullies are not supposed to be lovable. <laughs> But you guys are. And when I was a kid, I will tell you, you two were my favorite part of the movie. And I could literally quote your whole scene in the cemetery. Like, Hollywood. Yeah, that's totally it. You guys. So what was it like for you to be on the set as teenagers and to uh, get to be the bad guys, sort of? Take it away. You answered this one so well, I just have to have you take it off. So I'd like to see what you have to say about it this time. Oh. <laughs> One minute. Hollywood! 54. You know, you know, instead of just what it was like to be teenagers on the set, I'll tell you what was cool. We, the first scene we shot was in Massachusetts. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah! And what was what I do really like about one of the things I love with the conventions is new stuff always comes up meeting fans. And what was what's been interesting, number one, this this witch <laughs> that I've never heard of before. Everybody's been like, do you know who's here? Do you know who's here from Salem? <laughs> We've met several couple of people who have gone there for their honeymoons to Salem. We met a couple that's going to get married by you <laughs> next Halloween. So it's very interesting 30 years later to have this throwback to Salem and realize the influence this film has had on, on such a historic place like Salem and the, yeah. the subculture that's emerged and continuing to grow yes. 30 years later. It hasn't even peaked, guys. And now Hocus Pocus 2, let's see where it goes from here. Um, yeah, so, th yeah, I don't know. It has nothing to do with being a teenager. But Salem is on my mind. Maybe it's because you're right there. I, I will say the experience that we had were, you know, a couple of teenagers, you know, being picked up in a limo and going to my first class, <laughs> and then landing and getting picked up by a limo and going to our own hotel rooms, and in a place like it was the first time I'd ever traveled with a, as an actor to do a, a film outside of. Los Angeles, so it was very exciting. And <laughs> we were uh, like blind leading the blind because we didn't know. You got something? Yeah. Well, I've got I've got the mic. <laughs> I can tell me all this. I I doesn't work. This is the best part of the whole experience. Right? We, we just get to act like. Jackasses, <laughs> like we did back then, and have fun at it. He still laughs at me that way. Um, anyway, it was just it was amazing, like going and then we're and we step into this cemetery and it's like real and it's raining and the pressure was on a little. Uh, I will tell you that Kenny uh, pulled me aside after my first take. He's like, "It's wonderful. You're wonderful. It's great. Just tone it down." A little. <laughs> he says. It's too big. Like you're, this is not theater, you know. The camera's right here. Every time you move, I'm like, oh god, I might, I might not make it through tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. But it was it was amazing, and and to think about that was our first experience, like going, getting to go to Salem, and then also experiencing back in LA it was awesome.
This is just an anecdote. We're teenagers, I'm 15, he's 17. We become good friends on the film. Larry Bagby turns 18 while we're filming, and we have the very bright idea that maybe we could convince my mother to sign legal guardianship <laughs> over the film. So she doesn't have to come to set anymore. And she agrees! So there we are at the Sheraton Universal Hotel with all this per diem, hundreds of dollars on the hotel beds, and no parents. <laughs> And that's, yeah, I leave the rest to your imagination. But yeah, that was Hocus Pocus. Hi, <laughs> 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 Jason. What's up, Michelle? Is this the time of work? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my word. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to tell our little embarrassing story for those that missed it. So, uh, so when I met Jason a couple of years ago, uh, I fanned out, of course, and I was just getting there, and uh, I was... I was dancing at a club. It's <laughs> <laughs> fine. I told the truth. Male strip club. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly where it was. <laughs> so anyway, when I met you, you just you were just this bundle of energy. And uh, we were talking back and forth, and you started talking Binks, and I got like all teary and stuff because of the Binks voice. Yeah. You guys want to hear some? Yes. 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 I shall always be with you, and now I'm sort of always with you, aren't I? Yes. Yes, Michelle, you can turn me into a fat, useless, contented horse cat anytime you wish. No. <laughs> Thank you for applauding my subpar in this Thank you. Thank you. So, Jason. Michelle. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm having a really good time, too. Yes! <laughs> so, okay, I'm going to throw myself under the bus. So, for the longest time. Oh, I did that once. It worked out for you. Yeah. Sarah Jessica Parker. Okay. <laughs> okay. She didn't have much on at all. And we were squeezed in between the steering wheel and our seat. <laughs> okay. so, and so we go over this. Boom. And, oh my God. Um, and the original line was when you go. Boom! The reason I was, oh, I think I'm in love. <laughs> Disney was like Michelle, trying to edit me. So finally, they said, eh, he might be a little too dicey, you know? So they said, come up with something. So we go, so Sarah was actually driving a city bus. She had the steering when I was working the belt. <laughs> and so they put a log in the middle of the road, and Kenny goes, just, he's still alive, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. And, 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 so Kenny says, just come up with something outside. So he goes, whoa. Okay. And he just went, speed bump, because it felt like I was going over a log. Um, and uh, that's when I killed Ben. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, yeah, right, I did. Uh, okay, but I don't want to ruin the end of the movie in case anybody didn't see it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to turn you back on over to Lil Pinky. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> every ride at Disney World, that was my favorite. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Sure, it must be very confusing. We all recognize that that's not me playing human Thackeray. That's the, <laughs> the lovely and talented Sean Murray. Yes, and yes. 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 uh, outstanding, outstanding actor who and and uh, he was hired to play human Thackeray and do the voice. And this happens more often than you think. Um, it, the movie was done. It was wrapped. It was eighty percent done uh, when uh, Powers of V decided they wanted an older, uh, old world sort of sound. I think Sean was using his own voice. And they're like, you know, Binks is from Colonial Salem. You should sound a little bit more old world. So I read for it. I booked it. Uh, and it was just much cheaper to put me behind a microphone than get put me in the outfit and get the sets and going on. But but as the challenge was, I had to uh, not only uh, loop uh, Binks, who was also mostly animated to Sean's performance, but to Luke Sean himself. And they got they were so my attention to detail. If you remember the beginning when he's going to rescue his sister, my sister Emily, over there. Good to see you again. You look wonderful. Yes, miss you. Yes. Yes. You should try being a cat. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> but he's going to save his sister and he crawls through the moat and he's in through the window and there's this tight close up of him as he's watching the life being drained out of his sister. Tight close up and he's all wet from crawling in the moat and there's this bead of, of water going in and out of his nostrils because he's breathing so hard. That's my breathing. Like they, they really. Attention to detail. Yes. So you had to study every little mannerism, every everything to get right down to what he is saying. Was it hard for you? It was hard because Sean has a different rhythm that I do, um, and uh, and like I said, Binks was mostly animated. There wasn't a lot of, of room for me to to embellish or throw in like you know some Marsden inflections. So I had to kind of uh, like the, when he says. Uh, um, I had to wait for some air head virgin like that candle. Like, uh, he, he said it very, very fast. So therefore I had to say it very fast. Oh, but it's also uh, ADR, it's like, it's like a game. It's just they, they show the, the movie and you, you kind of fit the words in when you can. Um, it's a fun challenge that, that, that thankfully I had an aptitude for. Yeah. And we're glad that you got to do that. Me too, and I get to collaborate. <laughs> and yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, so now the dynamic duo over here, Allison and Andre. Yay! So, we got two mics. Yeah. 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 Two tables and a mic. Yeah. 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 Okay, so you two uh, basically carried a lot of this movie because you're all through it. Um, when, when you Thank you. <laughs> and so, see. I mean, and, and, and very relatable to other teenagers as well. So I guess my what question to you is, how was it like for you to be kids on the scene and to do this movie with these actors? And um, was it overwhelming or were you just like having a good time with it? Well, it's done. Um, um, so, <laughs> For me, this is my dream come true. I grew up watching Disney movies like Haley Mills, That Darn Cat, like Ricky Friday, all the 60s, you know, Flubber were my jam. And so I feel like I just, you know, law of attraction like just brought to me, and I also love The Wizard of Oz. So me doing this movie on the Disney lot with the cast that was involved, um, and Omri and Thora, having already been in this business for like a thousand years, and we were only 16 and 10. Um, and I just felt like it was a dream come true for me. And in 
like when I had to do the scenes with the witches, it was very terrifying for me too. Not just because of who they, you know, the witches themselves, but because of who, like I admired them all. Um, Sarah Jessica Parker, particularly, um, I watched Square Pegs, I watched her in Footloose, and Bette Midler, I watched her in Beaches and Cried My Eyes Out, and so it was just like, these people, I literally, and if you think about the time period, it was only like four years before, I watched them all do these things, and here I am in a movie with them, and it was my second film ever. So, it was really like a dream come true for me. Thank you. Queen. Thank just, you. Another, just another day at the office for me. <laughs> it it kind of was. We're like complete opposite. And I was just like, I mean, it took long enough to get the part. So I think that was kind of that anticipation and oh, waiting for all that to happen. Like kind of, that's where like, I think my nerves were kind of bubbling and all that. But then like once I got the part and I started working, it was just, yeah, it was just like, okay. I got the job, so now just get the job done and um, and I had a blast doing it. So. And you are good. Are we done yet? <laughs> Thank you. Oh. because like, you know, back in the day, you know, teen magazines and all this kind of stuff. And um, how, how did you deal with all that kind of stuff? Well, if you remember, it was a flop. So <laughs> no one knew us from anything. It wasn't a flop to me. I know. Thank you so much for being one person in the theater. We love you. No, so yeah, no one knew. No one, no one even picked up And it's so it. weird. I don't know if anyone saw Pam and Tommy, but there, yeah. It was such a good show, like but that. when she when she's in this like you know this executive's office in 1993, there's a picture or a poster of Focus Focus. I don't know if you know this. And then I was like, this is not accurate. No one had the poster up because it was a bomb. No one was proud of this movie except for us because we thought it was going to be something special. So I was not recognized for that at all. Okay. But, well, all of you. Uh, uh, I was throwing in this question. Being that it was a bomb, as you say, when, when, all of you, when did you start to notice that this is not a bomb and it's turning into something and we really got something here? How long did it take for that to kind of click? Anybody? Anyone? I think Anyone? it was like 2005, six. I have an anecdote. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jason Marsden, everyone. Hi. <laughs> Uh, so randomly invited to a, a Halloween party at a friend's house. And they made it a Hocus Pocus themed party. And I was like, oh, that's fun. I'll dress in like a black suit and, and cat ears and a tail and all the pink And I said, I'm going to be in character and I'm just going to mess with everyone all night and annoy everybody. And, uh, and I got there and they really, I mean, they, they decorated the entire inside of the house and the, the, the roommates were the, the Sanderson sisters and they had the movie playing and, and they were taking it really seriously. Like, wow, this is. <laughs> I guess it's really caught on, and, and then someone took a photo of me, and then BuzzFeed got it, and put that out there, and, and then I was like, okay, so there's some traction happening here, and then, you know, you go to a Spirit Halloween store, like I do every year, and there's more and more merchandise, but it, it must have been at least 15, 20 years later. How about you guys, anything? Wow. What year, wait, when was that Halloween part? It was like five years ago. Oh. <laughs> What was the question again? What was the question again? Bus, bus, bus. What was the question? Oh, no. oh, oh, bus. Oh, what was the question again? Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> um, I actually, when did I, when did I first realize that, that that it was bigger than what we thought it was? Um, are we here today for Hocus Pocus? <laughs> Probably, probably today. Uh, no, there was a Twitter feed, um, I guess maybe 
20, about 20 years after the movie and someone called me and said, you know that you're like the most talked about thing on Twitter this month or Halloween. I'm like, me, Larry Pagby? <laughs> and no, the movie opens So Yeah, that's when I kind of knew it was like something was going on there. And then Vanessa, you and I did that cool thing at the El Capitan where we did a panel and they showed the movie there. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, this, this is the first time I've ever seen the movie with people in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> and they all, they were like, it was packed. And so it was really fun to watch it with an audience and knew my lines better than I did. <laughs> I imagine, I'm curious to hear Doug's response to this mm -hmm. because with the conventions and you've done so many iconic characters, I'm, I'm sure the fans started coming to you. You had that direct line where you're, you know, you're seeing truth. Yes. Uh, I noticed the difference. I noticed the, the growth of the of Hocus Pocus fandom and uh, and being out there in the world. At my convention table, uh, I started doing conventions about uh, 07, 2007, so it's been a while. Um, and what, what would happen is I, would ha I had a Billy Bush Bushison picture on my table with all the other characters, and people would come up and go, huh, wait, what was that? What was that? <laughs> Pocus Pocus, a Halloween movie with Bette Miller and Sarah did. Oh yeah, I think I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, you, you, and you were in that? <laughs> yes. I think the painter is quite a dead guy. Oh, yeah, okay. I'll take an Abe Sapien. <laughs> Years though, it's been like uh, more and more like uh, you know. Oh yeah, and even people who'd seen the movie and loved it, were like, and you were what again? And I had to remind them I was the dead guy that came up out of a grave. Oh, oh. yeah. I, mean, I think I think my, my daughter would know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but with repeated viewings, it, it was the airing on ABC, yeah. Yeah. then ABC Family, yeah. and then Freeform Channel. Again and again and again, high rotation, and then yeah. the DVD, uh, every, uh, you, you Disney collectors left yes. it on your shelf at home. <laughs> yes. So we went through the VHS phase, the DVD, yes. the Blu-ray, the 4K, the tin foil thing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I just noticed that, and those had started coming into the conventions as well. Can you sign the label of, or the, the cover of my VHS? So, uh, so that's when I noticed, like, this has been living with them for a while and just getting more and more popular with more and more viewings. And now, people come up to my table and they go, oh, Silver Surfer, that's great, I'll take a billy. You know what I'm <laughs> so it's, it's kind of flip-flopped, yeah. Uh, so uh, I wanted to ask you, because uh, as with Taylor, you were in Hocus Pocus too. What was it like to be back on that set in you know, Billy mode all over again. Did, was it able, did you just pick it right back up? Yeah, oddly enough, yes. 29 years later, uh, <laughs> when uh, I see the three ladies and we're all done up in our exact same looks from the first movie, it was like, oh my gosh, has any time passed at all? <laughs> um, wow, I look fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> You know, when, when you have when you have friends that cover you with rubber and glue, you can look fabulous. So, yeah, no age today. Um, so, uh, uh, the difference was on the first movie. I was much like we've heard, heard here. I was enamored and, and gobsmacked with Sarah Jessica Parker, Bette Midler, and Kathy and Jimmy. She just came off Sister Act, right? Oh, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. they were just like, I'm yeah. in a movie with them. <laughs> so. This time now, 29 years later, a lot of life and careers happen for all of us, and uh, and I kind of felt like I, maybe I'm a peer this time. Maybe I can be one of them. Aww. I was still a slobbering fan, <laughs> but uh, but they treated me more like a peer. And and the big difference I noticed was our crew. The crew in the first movie, where they were kind of you know, when I came on set as Billy Butcherson, I looked like a you know like like a guy from the street. I <laughs> was like ragged and torn apart and had you know wrinkly old skin. And. Uh, <laughs> And, and uh, so, so I, I was interesting to look at the crew. Like, oh, that's about, hey, you know, the other day, this time or this this uh, Hocus Pocus two, the crew were all young people that had grown up watching this movie every year. And so when I walked onto the set the first time, you would swear that Elvis had entered the building. <laughs> So it was, that was quite, uh, 
Yeah, but the pressure was on. Like, I better bring Billy back. I did. <laughs> Can everybody remember how we did that? <laughs> yeah, but I, it, I will say this. I was 32 when we filmed the first movie. I am now 62. Uh, and that 30 year difference makes, yeah. I, I forgot how physical and, and demanding and uh, yes, right. Billy is. Yes. Uh, but I, I found out quick. <laughs> So, yeah, but I, but I think, I hope, I hope you I killed it. You hope killed I it again. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. All right, so this is a free for all for any of you. Um, is there anything that you would think that the audience would find interesting, like a little cute little story from behind the scenes or something that, just something interesting that you think that the diehard fans that are here would want to know? The wall of cats. <laughs> a, there was a whole wall of cats on oh, in cages. In yes. cages. Oh, oh. Uh -huh. um, and I remember them very clearly. I'm not sure why I was the only one that was noticing them, but there was. If any of you know, because I don't think they really animal train anymore. But back then there was animal trainers. You could have, you know, whatever animal you want to train. There's the people to go to for that, and this was one of the top people to go for that was this one guy who, who knew how to train cats, because you can teach dogs many tricks, but cats, you can only teach them one. <laughs> and so there was many things to do for Binks that would like, you know, obviously you would take all of these actions and they would just make up Binks. So there was about like 60 cats, I think, for, for Binks, the character <laughs> Binks. So there's a cat that would jump on your lap. There's a cat that would bat your face. There's a cat that would sleep. There's a cat that would, you know, jump on your shoulder. Wow. Different. Lap versus shoulder. Uh, walk alongside of you. And um, the three of us had to learn how to train these cats because the cat trainer can only do so much. Then when you're on screen, they have to love you and like, you're the person now. So, you know, we're the trainer, we're the substitute of that. So we had to do a buzzer, a clicker, and feed the cat, and then do the scene. <clears throat> so Thora admittedly says this. She's like, I was over it by like, <laughs> by like, you know, day five. She was like, can Vanessa, can you do this this time? Because it was only one person. And <laughs> they would always go look to me, both of them. Vanessa, can you be the one? <laughs> The cat whispers. I yeah. the cat whispers. Yeah, so, the buzzing and the, the beating. Uh, yes. You're now, um, uh, you actually do cat brain. Like, That's true. Uh, Anyone? No. <laughs> <laughs> Call me. My number is. Um, so, yeah. When I have your cats, not my cats. Um, so, yeah, that's a whole thing that nobody knows about this whole behind the scenes with real cats. You know, everything's animatronic now or animated. So, basically, we had real cats that piece together banks itself. Um, and even when we were doing the scene where the cat jumps on the book, that was a yes. difficult one because the cat had to jump on the book and then bat our face. So it's two things. And they were just like, we could do it with this one cat. He's the smartest one. <laughs> <laughs> so jumping on us and then we had to go, whoa, you know, and, and react to him. Yeah. And then just could not bat us. He looked like he was like swatting a fly. Like, <laughs> he was just like this where and Kenny was like, cut, you know. <laughs> the worst cat acting there. So finally, yeah, it was the nothing good could come from this book. So well, yeah, thank you for that. See, we grew together, now he's reminding me what the funny part of it was, which was Sean Murray was off camera saying the lines, we had react, so it's like, boom, nothing good could come from this book. So by the time we finally got the cat to bat our face properly, I walked off set and I was like, mom, nothing good could come from this book. <laughs> And I was like, nothing good could come from this. I was like, all day long. I was in my, in my dreams. Nothing good could come from this book. I was like, this is the line I remember, not my own. Yeah, yeah. From this movie is nothing good could come from this book. So that's the, oh. it's still stuck. It's still stuck. So yeah, the wall of cats. No one knows that there was you that's know, pretty, many that's pretty cats to make up the one base. Wow. So, anybody else want to share? Uh, let's see. Oh, no, not, I, I, the only, you know, the thing I, I like to bring up, because we've mentioned Kenny a few times, um, and, you know, this, uh, 
This has proven to be a very magical film, and he had so much to do with it. And one thing I, I love, and I don't know if everyone knows this, but he was a very talented choreographer. Yes. You know, and so this, we were speaking to, I think it was Corey, um, earlier you were, he mentioned how the film has such a, this cohesive <laughs> theatrical, it's almost like you're watching a theatrical production. The rhythm of the entire film and the way it's broken up into acts and it's very musical. And, you know, Kenny really did bring so much of that choreography into every, I think almost every scene. And uh, I love that watching the film and, and, and just. Down to the editing. Like, yeah. The editing, how the rhythm beats. Mm -hmm. and see, you know, like, I feel like every, you know, end of every scene had a little button to it. Mm -hmm. And on a follow up note to that, uh, Hocus Pocus 2 was directed by uh, Ann Fletcher, also with a dance and choreography background. Ah. So, so that's why it, it, it was a seamless kind of uh, transition to the new movie. And she also was very uh, concerned with pacing and timing and rhythm. And if a line had too many words in it, that she would be like, mm, 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 mm. take take the out of there. Oh, that's better. Yeah, do that. <laughs> so, music, music. Yeah. Uh, I just got the, the bus just <laughs> The bus left hours ago. <laughs> you too? A two? Okay. Listen. So, uh, so I'm gonna be here all week. Don't forget to try to meal. Uh, no. If I have two little trigger things, I think y'all might be interested. If not, you know, I, I will not speak again. Anyway, so um, as I was saying, the, the, most of the scenes that we shot uh, with the three girls, I mean, the, 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 we weren't really all in the same place at one time. But the scene where Sarah is riding and I say, uh, uh, hey, Buttercup, anybody ever tell you very easy on the eyes, which I made up also, um, is uh, she's really driving a city bus down the streets of Burbank. And most people don't realize that. I mean, I think we talked to Alice and yeah. Omri, they said they had a green screen when they went in the car, they weren't even moving. She was really driving a, I don't know, three ton bus <laughs> down Burbank with 40 people behind it, scared to death. Uh, <laughs> I don't think, you know, I think people just thought it was just, we were just, you know, just sitting still. And you know, we were really driving a bike. We were really running over boards or banks. Um, and, um, and the second thing is, is Allison, I don't know if you remember this, but I'm going to tell you a little, I'm going to pick your brain here for a second. There's a thing when she and I think Omri, I, I, you know, I'm drawing a boy, just always oh, Thomas killing me. Um, it, uh, it, 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 yeah, boss. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, it, I think when you guys are in a museum, if they set the scene right, maybe y'all can help me. Uh, y'all discover the book, right? Correct? Yes. Right, and there's a plaque yes. under the book. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. The plaque, Allison's lines in the movie, I'm gonna test y'all. Okay, in the lines, she said, this book is made from the skins of humans. Yeah. Okay, right? Yes. Do you remember? That's not what the plaque said. You, you changed those lines and she doesn't even remember that. The plaque actually says, because I own the plaque. Oh. Actually, I owned it before they sold it in London last year. By the way, I got a lot of money for that plaque. A lot. And, and, then, and I actually had to do a screenshot for verification that I really owned the plaque, but it was a screenshot from uh, behind the scenes. The plaque actually says, y'all ready? I'm not gonna tell you. No. <laughs> the plaque actually says this book is made from the skin of children. Oh. And I guess Disney thought that, like, you know, Michelle edited it and so I don't know it too well. And, uh, but I, you know, I don't even know if, Allison, do you even remember that? I don't remember them changing it, no. Yeah, but uh, that's what I'm saying is that that's what the plaque said, but your words weren't that. But uh, anyway, I thought y'all might think that. It's not. <laughs> Too late to apologize. <laughs> I'll give you back to the cat. <laughs> uh, now, uh, 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 fun little tidbit between Hocus Pocus one and two. Uh, when I come up out of the grave, it was similar similar introduction in both movies, in completely different settings. Uh, my grave in the first movie was indoors in the soundstage. So that soundstage that had the Sanderson House and the graveyard all in one big humongous uh, soundstage. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and uh, 
and then Hocus Pocus 2, it was actually out at a cemetery in uh, Providence, Rhode Island, where we filmed. Yes. So I, I was outdoors in, in like November, coming up out of the ground. It was a chilly night. Yeah. <laughs> And so, but you can tell it's it's a bit flatter, and uh, there was a big church in the background, a big white church steeple. That was not in the first movie because yeah, it was indoors in the first movie. <laughs> Michael and Taylor, what were you guys? Any anecdotes from working on on, on set? Jason, I don't think you're involved with this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm squeezed between the. Uh, <laughs> And I've got Don the bus driver right in front of me. And we went over this bump. Speed bump. Oh, are you really a virgin? <laughs> You're no virgin anymore, buddy. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of an interesting thing. Get out of here. You had your time. So, when I, when I got called on this movie, oh it's kind of funny because. My agent and I kind of fought over this film because up to this point, I'd done like four studio pictures, pretty substantial roles. One of them was The Babe. I played Lou Gehrig. Uh, John Goodman played Babe Ruth. I did another movie called Dick's Town with James Wood and Lou Gossett Jr., both Academy Award winners and stuff. So when this movie came up and my agent said, look, they got this role in this film. They're interested in you to play the role of the cop. I said, well, tell me a little bit more about it. And he says, it's not a big role. It's a very small role. But as your agent, I have to bring it to your attention. So I said, well, let me read the script. And I looked at it. And I said, yeah, it's a pretty small role. I said, but you know, that middle is a household name right now. She's a big deal. And Sherry Jessica Parker's a big deal. I said, I think this movie might be a big hit. And I, and I think we should do it. It's a smaller role, but I think it's working. And he fought me on it tooth and nail. He said, I think you're making a huge, huge mistake. Aww. I said, why? It was because your, your career's on this trajectory. And then I just don't think this is for you. And besides, it's a kind of a goofy comedy. And I said, no, it's kind of a funny little film, you know. So we fought. I did the role. I had a great time on it. Loved Ken. He was just fantastic. Just one, one of the all-time greats. <laughs> 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 I actually killed him off. I said to Vanessa the other night, I go, too bad Kenny died. She goes, what? <laughs> I go, Kenny died. Didn't you know that? And she goes, no, when? I go, like last year or something. She goes, no, he didn't. I go, yes, she did. And then she goes, don't argue with me. The historian. Yeah, yeah, the historian. Exactly. So don't ever ask me about who's alive and who isn't. They're all dead as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> So long story short, I get I get the role and we do the thing and then you were asking earlier about when did we know this movie was a hit. So I kept doing I, I you know I've been on I've been a series regular on three different series, I've done a lot of film work and other work. I knew immediately because everywhere I went, year after year after year, throughout the world, traveling, doing different projects, this is the role people remember the most. Yeah. And, and and I used to tell the agent, I go, see? <laughs> See, nice. I'm in this big hit called Hocus Pocus. Nice. So that's like my little antidote. There are no small roles, just small actors. The small actors. <laughs> so yeah, so I was really proud of him. Just from personal bus, bus. <laughs> Mike is no small guy. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, so that's so doing the role was a great opportunity for me and to this day, people still recognize me playing the cop. So it's, it's kind of a cool thing. And to be here is really cool meeting all of you. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. No. So <laughs> Taylor. Um, well, so kind of like what Vanessa said, we had animals on our set too. Um, we had like cows and pigs and goats and chickens and all that. Yeah. And so um, instead of going to do school, we would always sneak away and we would go and like hang out with the cows. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also we had spiders, which I think part of it was animated, but then um, at one part we had a spider crawling on somebody and that was real. And so Technically, we had to be trained to learn how to handle these spiders, even though we never like really did. Um, and so, I can't remember what kind of spider they were, but um, they were like so so sweet. And when, like we, they would do 
would take, and then they would get too tired. So they would go back in their little container and just sit there, and then we would move on to the next one, and they would do it. And it was just the sweetest thing. I was really scared. But when I look back on it now, I'm just like, oh, I wish I was more fond of them. <laughs> A wall of spiders. <laughs> how do you, hypothetically, how do you know a spider's sweet? <laughs> well, yeah, it's me. And, well, obviously, I feel like everyone is just like scared of spiders. That's just a common thing. And so when we had to go to get trained, the guy was like, oh yeah, just hold it, it's fine, just, it's not gonna bite you. And I was like, yeah, I don't believe you, but. <laughs> and so he put it on my arm and it just started crawling and doing things. And then when it got tired, it would like put a string on your finger and then go down to the floor and just sit there. Wow. And it was just like, sit there, I'll just real cute. And <laughs> A bunch of people very fond of cute spiders. Right, so now all I have to do is vomit and shimmy down and I'll be, I'll be cute. So cute. That was easy. Improv with what you did with your lines. Oh, oh, uh, oh, yeah, right. Uh, in the first, uh, the first script of Hocus Pocus one, um, I had a line, a word in the entire script. Uh, when I cut my mouth open and popped out the dust in the real moths. Yes. Then I pulled it ad, ad nauseum. Sorry, but uh, the script had me look at look at Winifred floating up there and just say, "Which with a B?" Right. Uh, and I'm thinking to myself, oh gosh, Disney, kids, family movie, I don't know that, I, that that's the moment we want to have for Billy coming, you know, out of his, with his voice for the first time. So I thought, well, what, so I kind of ad-libbed, um, I took a, took a note from Don, and I ad-libbed, <laughs> and, and I thought, maybe, maybe if he comes out with 300 years of pent-up, you know, I hate this woman. Well, she did poison me and sew my mouth shut, why wouldn't I hate her, right? So that's when I came up with Winch, draw it, you buck tooth, mop right, and firefly from hell! Yeah! <laughs> and then, of course, I got Omri by the neck during this time, and he's like, going, uh, like don't breathe on me. Well, that's when he looked at me and said, I waited centuries to say that. And you said, uh, say anything you want, just don't breathe on me. <laughs> You can imagine what the end of your breath smells like. Yeah. Need a mint? So I was really happy that that stuck in the film because it was not scripted that way originally. Yeah. That's kind of fun. All right, so we're going to wrap up in a few minutes because we want to get to some audience questions because we didn't get to do that last year and I wanted to make sure that you guys got to ask some questions as well. But before we do that, um, Jason, you and I talked about this recently about uh, how Hocus Pocus is 30 this year, but it is so timeless. And other families are growing up with their kids watching the movie. And I think it's one of those things that it just, it continues to grow and grow and grow. How does it make you guys, all of any of you, um, feel that you are a part of a family's traditions? You are household names to these people. and. You know, we used to watch a great pumpkin Charlie Brown when I was a kid, um, and now kids, it's Hocus Pocus. It's, it, I even joke like Brown September, it's Hocus Pocus season. Yeah. So, how does it make you feel that you are part of something so special? Oh, God. Uh, old. Oh. <laughs> I feel old. Yeah. Anyone else? Not old. No. no, no. I used to watch yeah. Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown too, and I still do. So yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> What person? Jesus! Yeah. <laughs> okay, Peanuts fan. Thanks. Um, this is this kind of is a, an answer to your other question too. It's like when did you first realize and all of this? So, 
in like about 2010, I did a movie and was using a house that was a, a person's actual household um, for the film. And the mother and daughter came up to me at the end of the rap day and the mother was like about to like cry, like she was tearing up. And she had, I looked down and I saw that she had a VHS, Hocus Pocus, Aww. and her daughter was sitting there with her. And her daughter looked at her mom and her mom looked at me and was like, do you think you can sign our VHS? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, of course, are you okay? And she said, like, yes, it's just that my daughter's going to college in a month. And Aww. we watch this every year. And I was like, of course I can sign it. And it was just the most precious moment. And that's when I was like, wow, then the next generation has been watching it. And now it's like grandmothers yeah. and, <laughs> and you know cousins or, you know, it's like at least one person in the family introduces yeah. Focus Focus to a family member. So um, I always just appreciate everyone who watches it. And I also like to thank the people who are the fans, uh, you know, partners. Uh, or spouses uh, because sometimes they don't really know what this movie is about and they're just like whatever you like honey let's yeah. go get a photograph I'll watch it for the 90th time with you <laughs> so thanks to the partners yes and best friends and cousins of people who love this movie just, just to kind of dovetail off of what she just said this being my first con and I've always been proud of being part of this movie because my kids have all watched it now my grandkids are watching it and stuff but this being my first con, and I mean this, and I'm not pandering to you guys, but it's truthful. It's from my heart. <clears throat> being here for this weekend has made me even more proud to be a part of this film because I have no idea how much this film meant to all of you. And to hear your stories and stuff has just been blowing my mind. So, thank you. Buzz, Buzz. I want to ditto everything he said, but truly I mean this, and I don't get to know much of it, you know, but without you guys, this panel ain't here, don't forget that, you guys, are it. give yourself a hand. Yeah. I'm crying. <laughs> no, I'm crying. I'll say one thing. So it never really registered for me, no matter how much merch came my way, no matter anything, I'm just like, ah, this is nice. <laughs> <laughs> and until this, which is strange, this was like the, the, the final hitter, like the only hitter for me was when so, um, somebody reached out to me via Instagram and was making a Lego set. Yeah. Wow. And when the Lego set came out, I was like, went to Salem uh, last year because that was the first time I started doing these cons and I was like have you what's it like in Salem they said it's a madhouse during Halloween you don't want to go there during Halloween but you can go there in the summer we got engaged there all the things that people say um, and then I was like but what about the Salem Witch Museum and I was like it is hilarious <laughs> That witch museum is so bad. There's like it's like wax figures yeah. falling over. And I said it wasn't a funny topic, but it's, it's a terrible display. So and then 
one of you in the audience has an ancestor who's depicted in there, and she's like, I'd be laughing at him in this like scenario in there. So it's 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 really funny. If you haven't been there, you have to go because it's like you know a school play or something very like you know all of you and I could probably do a better museum, but they don't care, which I love them so much for not caring and letting the wax like de you know deteriorate and melt and like barely have anything going on in there that can actually educate you on the state of which to at all. So that's my favorite place to go to. I cannot wait when we go again, whenever we go to be the first in line to go there and just see that it's the same. <laughs> Talk about nostalgia. That will be just right there. Okay, bye. So my favorite thing was the Sanderson Witch Museum, which has, I mean, the, the level of detail and reality and the wax figures were just pristine. That's, that's, I mean, you just you felt like you were there, it was taking you back in time. I've been to a lot of museums, but nothing, nothing compared to the ceiling with top notch. Okay, so we only have time, I was just uh, notified that we only have time for maybe Two or three more questions, and we have to make them kind of quick. We're on a schedule, so. I was 12, and no, I, I, uh, I'm a man, I just, uh, I, we, we moved from, I'm actually originally from Rhode Island. Uh, we, we lived in Pittsburgh for, yeah, all right. We, we lived in Pittsburgh for a couple of years, and then my, my stepfather got a gig teaching ballet in Fullerton College. We migrated to California, and then quickly, it was planted in my parents, uh, I, idea to put me in acting. Uh, got an agent, sent me out for a bunch of stuff after a couple of years, I read for the New Monsters, and I booked it, I booked that thing, and beat out all those other kids, and I got to play, I got to play N, Eddie Munster, the OG, Butch Patrick, and I are still buds, are buds. Um, but that's how I got to be Eddie, yeah. Hi, it's so nice to see you. I have been in the same room as many of you a multitude of times, and I usually look like Winifred Sanderson. Um, just a few miles down the road, I got to be friends with Winifred the first two years of Hocus Pocus Film and Spectacular. And Jason, your voice was like three cues for me to start getting ready and cross the bridge and get ready to go out and see 23,000 people. I just want to say thank you because um, I just finished the fifth year of a show that I produced that's a jukebox show starring the Sanderson Sisters. Um, this year we grew the company from five to almost 20. Because of what all of you do, because of the fans, and I have a business. I paid my way through breast cancer, and I am ready to retire this coming year and pass it on to the next generation. I just wanted to take a moment. Thank you. So, are you guys a boogeyman, or is there like a, you know, you're in Indiana? Besides, oh, you're in Indiana. Plug, plug, plug. Besides, uh, uh, Great Pumpkin, which is definitely a staple, I, I, I try to change it up. I, I watch a, a horror movie I haven't seen. Yeah. Same. Okay. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, I, I love Hocus Pocus, too. <laughs> and Hocus Pocus, too. Um, it's a, it's a great movie, and uh, like I, I caught myself crying last year. Uh, quiet Halloween, which I loved, and uh, and I was just, just turned on the TV, relaxed, and it came on, and I I, I watched it, <laughs> and and uh, I loved it, <laughs> and and I love all these people, and I love you guys. It's it's become like more emotional these last few years. Um, because it is like a kind of a spiritual experience, right? To, to be able to do what we do here and connect with the fans and the joy and the love. And it's such a positive film in the end, you know, with some cool, creepy stuff. You know? <laughs> but uh, we, again, we do thank you. And I, I actually know Janet Cut here. Uh, we went and saw Janice Joplin show together. Uh, I'm friends with her, with her dear friend. Um, in LA, but um, I remember you going through all that stuff, and I'm so happy to hear that you fought that battle, and what an entertainer you are too, so uh, thanks for sharing that.
And thank you all. Uh, I'll, I'll get off now. I, I, I gotta <laughs> get this going. We are so grateful to all of you. So that was um, the video for the panel. I hope you guys loved it. Um, so funny, so great. I had such a great time during the panel. Um, just to hear them talk about the movie and give us stories and it was just so great. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video and um, I'll see you guys next time, all right? Bye.